So continuing with perceptual constancy, we're now going to talk about shape and size constancy. And a working definition of shape and size constancies um, is that we're able to perceive both the form and the size of familiar objects as unchanging, uh, despite changing distance and retinal images. So what does this mean? Uh, well, if we take um, the understanding of what perceptual constancy is, um, in general, it's being able to hold certain things constant about what we're looking at. Um, we looked at color and brightness, and now we're going to look at shape and size. And what shape constancy allows us to do is look at an image um, like the two presented here on this slide and understand that in the top one, we're still looking at a circular clock. And in the bottom one, we're still looking at a rectangular door. Obviously, the retinal shape has changed. Uh, what our retina is receiving in the first one is more like an oval, um, and then this one's also sort of like an elongated circle. Um, and in the third one, it is a circle, um, but our brain still understands that clock is a circle. Uh, and that is because of shape constancy. So it's being able to see things from all different angles and still understand that their shape itself remains constant. Size constancy is the same kind of thing. It allows us, even if our distance from objects changes, to still understand that the size of that object is not changing. Here we have a photograph of people at a couple of different locations or in a couple of different distances from the viewer. And we don't assume, for example, that the people in the back are smaller. Um, because of size constancy, we understand that they're basically human size. However, since they're casting a smaller retinal image, we have a little bit of depth perception or a monocular cue that now comes into play. And we say, well, size constancy tells me they have to still be the same size. Therefore, because they're taking up smaller size on my retina relatively, and because they appear higher up on my retina relatively, I'm going to assume that those people who appear smaller are actually just further away, um, are just farther away. Um, now, there's a couple of illusions um, that demonstrate how even though we have something like size constancy, we also take into account um, a lot of different depth cues. Um, earlier uh, in the chapter, you saw that uh, monster in the hall illusion uh, where there's sort of like a checkerboard pattern and there are like two monsters or two dogs in your book placed at different locations. And in that one, um, you sort of, your, your mind's a little bit tricked about how large each of those images is, uh, and we don't perceive them as having a constant size, that's because some depth cues are going to override our understanding of uh, size constants. The moon illusion is one of those examples. Um, even though we know the moon, like rationally, you know that the moon appears pretty much the same size no matter where it is in the sky, um, what we see doesn't match up with our cognitive understanding. Um, the moon actually appears up to 50% larger when it's low on the horizon as opposed to when it's like really high in the sky. Uh, and the reason for that, researchers think, is because the horizon provides a depth cue. And when we see the moon situated on the horizon, which appears so far away, the horizon does, we assume that the moon must be massive um, because we're still able to see it at such great as the moon rises, um, it starts to remove itself from any of those depth cues, and so we see it uh, more true to what the size um, might be. Another illusion um, that sort of plays with our depth cues is uh, something called the Ames Room, and um, I encourage you actually to YouTube this because it's really cool to see the Ames Room in action. Um, so just Google like Ames Room explanation, and you'll be able to see a video of people walking through one. Um, these two girls. Even though size constancy says we should see them as being like the same size, we don't. And the reason for that is because the room is constructed in such a way to mess with our minds. Um, you're looking at it and you're assuming that that back wall is um, at a 90 degree angle. It's not. Um, the corner that like the smaller girl is standing in is actually much farther away. But the window and the floor has been painted to make it look like it goes straight across. And so we're given false depth cue information about linear perspective um, and relative size. Uh, so we actually see these girls as having different sizes and size constancy is overridden uh, by these depth cues. Um, so definitely I recommend that you Google uh, Ames Room. We'll try to find a video and put it after this uh, in the playlist as well. But it's kind of cool to see the Ames Room happening. 